This is a podcast from the National Institute for Health and Care Research for health and social care professionals engaged in research to celebrate the week of International Nurses Day. I am joined today by Jennifer Allison, who is an Associate Director of Nursing and Midwifery at the NIHR and Lead Matron of the NIHR Clinical Research Facility in Southampton, where she leads a large team caring for patients and healthy participants in early phase studies. She is also the immediate past president of the International Association of Clinical Research Nurses and remains on their board. She was presented with their Distinguished Clinical Research Nurse Award in 2011 and has a wealth of experience in articulating the unique contribution that clinical research nurses and their teams make to global healthcare. Gosh, what <laughs> that is an impressive portfolio, Jen. Thank you so much for speaking with me today. Oh, it's really wonderful to be here, Lucy. Thank you. It's always a little embarrassing to hear someone read all that out. We are interested today to learn more about the IACRN Research Across the Globe event that you hosted last year. But please, could we start with you sharing a bit about yourself and what inspired you to become a research nurse? Thanks, Lucy. Yeah, I'd be happy to do that, of course. So um, you probably can tell from my voice that um, I I don't have the beautiful English accent that that my colleague Lucy has. But um, I grew up and trained as a nurse in New York City. And um, I was always really interested in preventative health and and it was something I never could quite think of, of how I would uh, do that as a nurse. But it sort of dawned on me one day that I could go into pediatrics. And if you got people young and maybe made them healthy and give them healthy habits when they're children, that might improve their, their health and well-being later. So, so that sort of idea of improving health was, was something I was very intrigued by. And I think like a lot of things, really. Um, you end up sort of taking opportunities, at least I have, um, as they're presented to you. So I was working as a a children's nurse, as you would call it. It's a bit different in America because our training was um, one single route to becoming a nurse. And then you'd go and you could do mental health or you could work with kids or adults or anywhere really without um, specific different training routes. So there I was as a children's nurse in a very busy, acute medical center in New York City. And um, after a couple of years of general ward care, I moved into the Peds Intensive Care Unit and the Neonatal Intensive Care Unit, which were in the same, um, the same department, and enjoyed that and really loved it. And the sicker they were, the more satisfying it was. And part of it was because you could pretend that when they left, they were better. And of course, that wasn't always the case, but they came and went very quickly. And kids do tend to recover very quickly and they're um, able to go home perhaps faster than adults would. But um, it was very transient, the patient population because of that. Um, But there was a group of children who were looked after by a professor, a neurologist, specialist, pediatrician, um, and she had a research nurse. And ironically, her current research nurse at the time was leaving her to move to England with her husband. So um, I had a friend who was looking for a new job and I said, you should go for that job. That's an interesting job. And she said, no, I don't like those kids that much and those patients that much, but you do, you always look after them. So you should do it. And it hadn't dawned on me that I'd go for a job, but there it was. And I applied and I got it. And it was the only research nurse in the institution. And it was the most amazing experience of um, very quickly, actually, this this unique patient population, uh, Jewish genetic disease called familial dysautonomia, of being able to um, try new things through ethically approved protocols, I know that, um, but very quickly then implement them into care and improve the course of the children's lives. And um, in the time I was there, we identified the gene that caused the disease. We were able to offer carrier testing, prenatal diagnosis for families of children already affected. 
and um, improve their their conditions so that they weren't all dying of aspiration pneumonia at very early ages. So it was fascinating. And that work um, allowed me to have contact with specialists around the world. So when I met my future husband, who happened to be uh, from England, British, um, and I moved to London, I was able to interview and, and get a job at Great Ormond Street based on contacts that we had. Uh, and that's where the children in London were being, excuse me, were being cared for with that disease. So it was a bit, I sort of fell into research and I think that was always the case uh, years ago that people would sort of stumble upon an opportunity. Um, we're, we're much more um, direct now and, and seek to promote this wonderful career. So um, working with NIHR in Southampton and the clinical research facility was the most um, fabulous opportunity. Again, just happened upon this amazing facility almost 20 years ago now, and I became their education lead because I had some research experience and, and it was a brand new department, brand new facility at the time. And um, they were very keen to attract uh, any individuals with research experience then. Uh, and again, that opportunity kind of presented itself during the pandemic in 2020, when I learned of an opportunity to work in NIHR as an associate director of nursing. I wasn't looking for a new job, um, but I think when you see something so unusual and so exciting, and at a time when it's so needed to help with, um, we were working on all the vaccine studies at the time, uh, to do some workforce planning um, really was very satisfying. So I would always recommend people to, to take the opportunities when they come, because you never know when that might happen. Thank you. Thanks for sharing that with us, Jen. Could you give us a brief summary of the IACR event that you hosted last year? Well, in summary, it was absolutely nuts. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, so I was president at the time and we used to, we had about two cohorts and we had been planning for 2020, a cohort of nurses. So International Association of Clinical Research Nurses, you know, they're all over the globe, our colleagues. And it's a small organization, but we are doing what we can to promote clinical research nursing globally and to reach uh, individuals working to support research. So um, we, all, we had these lovely um, visits to the UK in previous years where we would open up an opportunity to members of IACRN to come to the UK for a week and um, meet colleagues from all over the, the country. And we collaborated with the UK CRF network so we placed nurses based on their interest at different facilities around the country and um, brought them together at the International Nurses Day celebration that NIHR um, always ran to mark Florence's birthday on the 12th of May or near the 12th of May. So we were doing that and we were in the middle of planning when the pandemic hit and it was really disappointed because we had interest from across Africa and Europe and America as as well as uh, um, further afield in um, Japan and China. So what we decided to do, everyone was desperate to connect. So we thought we'd try something virtually. So um, we had individuals who were keen to put on anything from a couple of hours to two days. The UK chapter of IACRN, the branch, um, in UK and Ireland, they, they had two days of content where they would showcase their work, um, have presentations. Um, it was very oversubscribed in terms of content and the agenda. Lots of people wanted to take part. There weren't enough hours in the day uh, to facilitate everyone. But um, we opened with, uh, with a, a session in New Zealand and uh, I was up in the middle of the night throughout the week that we did this with visits in Taiwan, in China, uh, Japan, Africa, across America, 
um, and New Zealand. And it, it was fabulous and, and so satisfying. And um, everyone felt like they had actually had a reconnection, which I think we all really needed after everything we had been going through with the earlier stages of the pandemic. So that's what we did last year. And I can't believe we pulled it off, frankly. I was exhausted, <laughs> but it was so wonderful. It sounds like a fantastic event and such a great achievement, Jen. Thank you. Did I mention Africa? Because they were very involved as well. I, I didn't want to leave out Africa, the Africa chapter. How were you able to encourage all of this networking in a virtual environment? Well, it didn't take a lot of encouragement because they were desperate to get together. And, and I think that's what we found whenever we got a bunch of people on a call. Um, and, you know, now with the technology and everyone's so used to it, to, to have your, your smiley faces from around the world, uh, a bit bleary eyed, some of us, if it was very late in the, in the day or early in the morning. But um, people really were craving the connection, having not been physically together in so long. And we do have uh, or had had. Um, an annual conference um, for IACRN, and and people had really missed uh, not having it in the October. So when this came along for May, they just grabbed it because they thought, well, we need to we need to do something. And what do you think makes the IACRN so successful? Oh. Gosh, it's the members, you know, where there's board, there's, well, there's an amazing group of people who are all around doing amazing projects and, and so dedicated with their time. And luckily, a lot of us are retiring because we've got more time to devote to it. But um, it's, it is the membership. Um, we're, de- we're structured uh, into committees with uh, a board of directors. And then we have chapters. So across the globe, there are groups of nurses who are attached to the organization in that capacity. So it's a local um, arm of the of the parent organization. I think probably the secret weapon is the committee chairs, because we have education and we have a research committee, we have a membership and marketing committee, and um, a, a range of, of different groups that all come together to to keep the the organization going. Um, none of us get paid to to work and and uh, run it, so it's all volunteers, which is I think a remarkable achievement to have done what we have in articulating the unique specialty of, of clinical research nursing, getting that. Uh, ratified and agreed by the American Nursing Association, and then going on to developing um, a, a, a portfolio entry into board certification for clinical research nursing, um, all within about 10, 11 years, is really quite remarkable when it's such a, a small handful of people driving um, through sheer will and determination all of this activity. So I'm you know, immensely proud to... Um, to have been the, uh, as I called myself, the pandemic president. Um, I missed, you know, being in conference physically with, with everybody and, and sharing that, that wonderful time together. And it's, it's been a very different way of being a president, but I was really proud to do that and remain now as past president to support them as they transition on into the next chapter. Um, And are you involved in this year's celebrations? And what do those exciting plans have they got? Well, I keep getting emails. So yes, is the answer, because I seem to be involved. And um, it's still, I mean, everyone's been so busy. Everyone knows that. Everyone everywhere has been busy, haven't they? Um, So we, it looks like there's a, a little bit of a delay in some of the planning. So there will be things being launched. So hopefully somebody uh, listening will start to see things on um, Twitter and elsewhere around planning. But it looks like today it's gone to a two-day event. It was going to be a one-day event on International Nurses Day. And now I think they're going to divide it because of the content and the um, time zones that we need to try to cater to. So it it looks like it's going to be a two-day virtual event. And that it's going to start on International Nurses Day. Day one will be on the 12th. 
and the second day will be on the 20th, which is International Clinical Trials Day. And it's about celebrating the achievements of IACRN over the the past year, Um, celebrating the members, including those who published in a recent um, uh, edition of the Journal of Research in Nursing, our own Gordon Hill, who's uh, co chair of our IACRN UK and Ireland chapter is one of the editors of that edition. And then um, looking forward to some amazing things that we have planned, including webinars. We've got a new learning management system we're just investing in. There's going to be our face-to-face conference in October, which I can't hardly believe is going to happen, but I'm determined to be there. Um, There's a conference in Sweden with one of our other uh, European leaders and um, looking at other ways of connecting virtually as well. And um, yeah, we'll see. And maybe we'll even be able to celebrate plans for our international visitors return next year, which would be really nice to to be able to start to think about that. That would be good. Um, And finally, do you have a final message for nurses and midwives here in the UK and globally as they celebrate during this special week? I do. I always have a message or two. I mean, research is just amazing. So, um, and it's never been more important. So colleagues across the UK have you know, emerged from pandemic studies and are really key to future improvements across all disease areas and, and getting all the studies up and running that, that need to be there to support and, and, and look after our patients. And it's been a long couple of years, but it's never been a better time to contribute to global health and improvements in patient care. It's a wonderful time to work in research. And I want to thank everyone involved, colleagues who support me so I can do the work I do, and especially all the research nurses and midwives out there. Thank you, Jen, and thank you for your time today. It's been an absolute pleasure to capture this discussion on the NIHR podcast and to hear from you. You take care of yourself, Jen. Thank you. Thank you, Lucy.